This short module will describe and show examples of concentric eye walls and replacement cycles that occur in intense tropical cyclones. An example of part of an eye wall replacement cycle, also known as a concentric eye wall cycle, is shown here. In the left panel, we see high frequency passive microwave imagery of Hurricane Francis from 2004. Two eye walls are apparent and are labeled. At this point in time, the inner or primary eye wall is weak but consists of a ring around a small eye at the center. The weak ring is surrounded by a moat of warmer brightness temperatures denoted by the blue colors. Further from the center, a solid ring of deep convection is present. It is the outer or secondary eye wall and at early stages of its formation, it is often contiguous with the primary rain band, which extends radially outward from the inner core. For comparison on the right is a mature cy tropical cyclone, Hurricane Katrina in 2005, that was not, at the time, undergoing an eye wall replacement cycle. A single ring of intense convection surrounded the eye, and a primary rain band extended radially outward from the inner core of the hurricane. Eye wall replacement cycles are generally easy to, detec to detect using high frequency passive microwave or radar data that has spatial resolution that is high enough to discern the structure of convection beneath the high cloud observed in IR visible imagery. However, sometimes replacement cycles become apparent even on visible and IR imagery as well, especially if a large moat with reduced deep convection forms, such as in the case here with Francis. The reason or reasons that secondary eye walls develop in the first place are not fully understood. A number of theories have been postulated, some providing a general mechanism for concentric eye wall formation, and others hypothesizing mechanisms for secondary eye wall formation in specific cases. We won't work through any of the incomplete list of mechanisms shown here in any detail during this course, but instead we'll focus on developing a basic understanding of TC kinematics first. The rest of this module will show a few examples of eye wall replacement cycles. Eye wall replacement cycles can also be seen from radar as well as the passive microwave example shown earlier. However, this is only observable continuously if the cyclone is located near land or if an aircraft equipped with radar flies through the storm. This example shows the evolution of an eye wall replacement cycle observed by the Eldora X-band radar on a NOAA P-3 flying through Hurricane Rita in 2005 during the Rain-X field campaign. In the upper left image, a primary eye wall is obvious, surrounding the clear echo eye in the center, and it was surrounded by several high echo sort of strands of various pieces of rain bands. The upper right panel shows radar data that was collected about 23 hours later, and it depicts a strong outer eye wall that is developed in a ring nearly 100 kilometers wide in diameter. And it was surrounded by a weakened, or inside of it was a weakened remnant of the previous primary eye wall, which is now an inner eye wall. The secondary region of mesoscale subsidence, the moat, separates the two eye walls. This is a low echo reflectivity region. Eventually the inner eye wall decayed, resulting in a very large eye, which was surrounded by a single eye wall. Three examples of eye wall replacement cycles are shown here for the same typhoon over a five day period in SSMI passive microwave data at 85 gigahertz. Each cycle is outlined by a different colored box. The orange box is the first seven and then this yellow box for the next three images in the bottom row is uh, a third eye wall replacement cycle surrounded by the red box. These show several examples of secondary eye walls becoming the primary eye wall, eye wall contracting inward then a new secondary eye wall developing and repeating the process several times. Displayed currently are cross sections of wind speed obtained by aircraft through a very intense Atlantic hurricane, Gilbert, in 1988. The individual panels illustrate the evolution of tangential wind speeds as a function of radius over a four day long period. In the top panel, a large 50 kilometer plus wide eye is apparent and was surrounded by wind maximum of about 40 to 45 meters per second as denoted by the y-axis with the radius 
from the center on the x-axis. The wind maxima corresponded in space with the eye wall. Over the course of about two days, the eye wall had contracted. The radius of maximum wind had shrunk to less than 15 kilometers, and the maximum wind was nearly 80 meters per second in the eye wall. A hint of an outer wind maximum, denoted by the letter O on either side of the center, had become apparent about 100 kilometers away from the center on either side. Twelve hours later, a clear outer wind maximum was present at about 50 to 75 kilometers of radius. An additional day later, later now looking at the fourth panel, the inner eye wall had weakened. Only a small wind maximum of about 25 meters per second was present in the remnant of the inner eye wall, and the outer eye wall had become the primary wind maximum with a radius of maximum wind at 50 to 75 kilometers and a maximum wind speed of 40 to 45 meters per second. This represented a significant weakening of the storm as the pressure gradient across the inner core weakened. However, the weakening is often temporary if the cyclone does not subsequently encounter unfavorable conditions, such as increased shear, cool ocean surface, dry air, or land. A day later, in the final panel on this figure, the new primary eye wall had contracted inward to a radius of about 40 kilometers, and the wind speed had increased some as well. Now, many cycles occur much more quickly than the one shown here. A schematic of a Typical average eye wall replacement cycle is shown here that summarizes what we have discussed so far. At top, time is on the x axis and a proxy for intensity is on the y axis. This is an approximate evolution of cyclones experiencing replacement cycles occurring within a steadily favorable environment for intensification. Some intensification may occur after the outer wind maximum is first detected, which is denoted by this white dot. The schematic then indicates that about nine hours later, denoted by this number down here, weakening of the inner wind maximum will begin, and that concentric rings will appear on passive microwave or radar imagery. Weakening may occur for about 16 hours before the cyclone begins to re-intensify. Now about after 36 hours from when the outer wind maximum first appeared, the inner eye wall has completely dissipated. And note that these, this time frame of evolution is only a, an average and can vary significantly from storm to storm and may depend on environmental characteristics outside the cyclone as well as dynamics internal to the storm.